So, I am here with the lovely, lovely Esther. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. All right, all right. Yeah, I can't say it's a very sunny morning because it's kind of raining outside. So, you know, it's just It's but, Belgian yeah. weather. Yeah, yeah, that is true. And that I'm is from very, Belgium, very true. So yes. <laughs> this is very homey for me. That's good. Keep yeah. it gray and mm -hmm. drizzling. Yeah, see, I'm from San Francisco, so it looks like this like 90% of the time of the year. So I'm like, oh, look, I'm at home again. There we go. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, how have you enjoyed New York so far? I live in New York. Oh! Know? I live in Manhattan. Okay, cool. Yes, yes, so, yes. All right. Um, I, I love it. <laughs> I, this is it. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So I want to get right into it, you okay. know, and I really, really want to focus on you as a person, as a postcard. I mean, we all know what you do, just how amazing you are when you're working, different things like that. But I really want to kind of get into your head and that whole process. So when you wake up in the morning, like, what are the processes that you go through in your own mind? You know, what are like the good, the bad, the weird things and how you even maybe evaluate yourself as soon as that alarm goes off? You know, yes, I'm getting so, right into it. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's interesting, right? So I would say one of the things I've been occupied now mm -hmm. in the morning is to turn to my partner first, mm -hmm. greet him, nice. just kind of, you know, spend a few moments together and not go for the phone. Ah, yes. So I yes. have decided that my alarm clock is no longer my phone. Okay. And uh, okay. my phone will not be charged in my room. Nice. Um, right. Because I think that it's just become too much of another, you know, presence, mm -hmm. ever, yeah. ever presence. Okay. Then um, right now I'm writing a new book. Ah. So I wake up <laughs> and my head is like, <laughs> you know, all these thoughts. And I keep yeah. thinking, I can, uh, I will write this down later. And then I say, no, 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 write it down now. You will forget. Yes. No, no, I won't yes. forget. It's so clear to me. Of course, I will remember. Of course, I don't remember. <laughs> I should write it down the minute I think about it. And Until then you, like, I get think, in the shower and all of a sudden it pops back in your head. Oh, and in the shower, <laughs> it's like the most. Uh, so now I have a little microphone <laughs> because so many ideas come because the shower is a real meditative space yes. for me. I take yes, showers is. almost with my eyes closed. Oh, wow. Just okay. like the water and, mm -hmm. and, and it's a very soothing morning experience probably nice. the f one of the first things I do okay um, and then I wake up mm -hmm. um, and then I check to see if I got any messages from my boys mm -hmm. nice, and nice. Uh, you know is everything okay is the mm -hmm. coast clear no fires everybody <laughs> had a good night nobody's in the hospital yeah, yeah. Then, it's then I can breathe right. All right. and then <laughs> I either see patients for the whole day mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I feel like I go into that Zen space that is yeah. my office that yeah. is one of the last places that has no phone no yes. no yes. you know real quiet mm -hmm. and and uninterrupted attention mm -hmm. you know where I do long sessions with people and yeah. I just feel like I'm so privileged That's good. and That's then good. either I teach either mm -hmm. I write either I um, I do therapy mm -hmm. and what I try to do of course is do some physical activity in the yes. morning yes. so in the last months I'm very much back to at a running at a river oh, and wow. okay. if I half an hour sometimes not mm -hmm. much but that river that mm -hmm. west side highway <laughs> in the morning and especially when it's gray like yes. this actually mm -hmm. is just soulful and I nice. feel like I have to give myself that mm -hmm. And I don't have the discipline. And many times okay. I'm lazy and, you know, I have to... Uh, I feel you're honest with yourself about it. Like, no, sometimes I just can't do it. <laughs> no, so I rely on people. Okay, I am so good. socially wired that's that good. if somebody waits for me or if I make somebody come with me, mm -hmm. then I get the motivation. Nice, it's like nice. I won't have it for myself, mm -hmm. but I will have it through my connection with somebody. That's good. That's good. I and like then that. I talk on the river. And yes. so the river now becomes this. Either I do it alone on the phone, uh -huh. either I talk with people. It's, it's almost better than music. I like so that. I take I like it as that. a time to move mm -hmm. and connect. I like it. All right. So... With the patients and clients that you serve and that you speak to, it's always kind of a funny exchange of energies all the time because I work with a lot of teens, you know, that have PTSD or have done with things, sexual trauma and mm -hmm. things like that. So what do you pull from that? You know, when you're talking with the client or a client is just kind of, you know, spilling it all, you know, what do you see inside yourself in relating to that person or trying to get to the root of that? You know, because a lot of times we deal with transference, counter-transference, different things like that. How does that zone in on you? So, you know, I 
can work with couples, mm-hmm. which is the primary unit yeah. that I work with, and I can work with corporations and companies. Ah, yes. So it's, it's a broad spectrum. Mm-hmm. I think that primarily because I work from a resilience-based model, and I'm yeah. not focused on pathology. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I actually feel that I get, uh, you know, people in, uh, in the bottom hmm. can still exhibit strengths yes. and hopes yeah. and energies that mm-hmm. are just really, really powerful. I, um, I go through the whole spectrum. Sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like, Phew, I don't know how I'm going to de- help <laughs> these people. I don't know, you know. And sometimes I feel like I channel, mm-hmm. like I, I, and you know, and I'm open to the surprise. Yeah. I, the yeah. hardest thing when you do couples work is mm-hmm. to know, is it over? Yes. Or is it not? Yeah. When yeah. do you say, that's about as much as I can do for you? Mm-hmm. I think it's true in other consulting work I do as well. Mm-hmm. And so it's very much, I think today for me, the permission to not know. Okay. When I don't okay. know, I wait, I listen, I pay attention, and I see until an idea comes and yeah, I think, I, cool. think I have a way out. You know, here's what I'm going to suggest. Mm-hmm. In the past, you know, I do this for 30 years. Mm-hmm. It's 30 hours of couples <laughs> therapy, I think I've calculated. <laughs> you know, I would have gotten nervous. Like, what okay. should I do? What should I do? Like, I felt yeah. that the responsibility is with me. Mm-hmm. I don't. I can't want more than you yeah. what I yeah. think you need to want. Oh, I like that. So okay. the responsibility nice. ultimately leaves, stays with you. Mm-hmm. It's your determination. And that is very hard when you have people who have no hope because yes. you want to yes. hope for them. Yeah. So you hold it. Mm-hmm. But at some point for change to happen, they need to re-engage with their own sense of hope. Yes. You know, yes. the most important question when you do therapy is what is change? How do people change? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. change for me ultimately is a new experience. Mm-hmm. So my work is about creating new experiences, okay. basically. Yeah. You know, with mm-hmm. oneself, mm-hmm. with one's loved ones, with one's work, with mm-hmm. one's colleagues. But it is about creating a new experience. And the fundamental of that new experience is a balance between creativity and responsibility. Nice. So tell me about your very first session. Oh, my How God. How did that go? I got it. I don't know. think I remember. <laughs> I don't think I remember my first, first session. Or some of your earlier ones that... When you were first getting into this, you know, I'll tell you a down. very interesting <laughs> thing about my early clinical work, mm-hmm. actually. But it's not about the patients. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that um, it was new to America. Ah, I mm-hmm. was in Boston, okay. and I happened to have a French accent, mm. and which I'm not French, but I have a yeah. French accent yeah. in English. And I understood very quickly that a French accent here mm-hmm. made you look smarter, even yeah. if you knew nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not right because I was working in a Hispanic unit and ah, I speak fluent Spanish yeah. and I could really see a reverse mm. bias. Ah, you know, okay. the other people knew a heck of a lot more than me, uh-huh. but their accent worked against them. Yeah. And I just could, and I didn't try, I didn't pretend, mm. but I, it was actually, I think, um, more an introduction to racism than an yeah. introduction to mm. um, clinical work. That's interesting. Now, now that you say that, you know, kind of shifts one of my questions. What have you seen between the racial biases in terms of, especially dealing with couples, sex therapy, you know, is interventions, things like that, of how does that balance in terms of your thinking process going into the work? Like, do you have any kind of, well, have you had, you know, I won't say now, have you had any kind of notions going in saying, maybe this person may look at me different, maybe this person may receive me different, and how do you balance that, All especially right. when for everyone comes in, they may say they have a problem, but they don't want to admit it. You know, or they have the walls up, or what does this lady really know about me? How do you really balance that? So I tell you two things. Mm-hmm. First, I speak nine languages. Nice. I work in seven. Mm-hmm. It is an enormous bridge mm-hmm. to people who are different from me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do bilingual therapy, so mm-hmm. that the room is not only mm-hmm. having the dominance of English and the power of the local language. Yeah. yeah. I never ask people who come to see me what's the problem. Yes. I start by saying I like to meet people before I meet their problems. Nice. nice. You are not the sum total of the reason why you're here, and if things were good, you, were not, you wouldn't be here. Nobody necessarily, you know, it's, I'm a little bit like the dentist, mm-hmm. right? So true. So <laughs> I want to know about you first, because mm-hmm. I'm sure that you may be doing great in many other parts of your life, yes. and that's not the one for which you come, but exactly. that one is where you're going to draw from mm-hmm. to help you and to find resources for the stuff you're struggling with. So I'm a cross-cultural psychologist. Okay. 
by trade. I have looked at culture and relationships and mental health for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I am interested in the intersection between couples, culture, and sexuality. I think that once you think cross-culturally, interracially, you basically know that your truth is only a relative truth and that what you think yeah. is the way to do it, uh, the neighbor next door says, no, no, it's a whole other way to do it. And this is true for gender and this is true for child rearing and this is true for power dynamics. You know, so it actually really keeps you on your toe and you remain curious. I yeah. don't know you. Yeah. So tell me where you come from. Mm -hmm. What is the idea about that? So I yeah. get to be not just a therapist, but an anthropologist. I like it. All right, one final question, because I actually got um, Jonathan Ford with this yesterday, so I want to ask you in a yeah. different way. If you had yourself in a session right now, like your younger self, what would you not tell yourself in terms of a therapy session? What would I not tell myself? Yeah, what would you not tell yourself? Like if you were... If you were counseling yourself... And ah, you what would yes. the therapist not... Oh, uh -huh. that's a great question. <laughs> I can tell you, ah. my first experience as a patient mm -hmm. in therapy, I sat quiet for weeks with a therapist who said nothing, hmm. who probably waited for me to talk. And the more quiet I was, and the more I thought, what's wrong with me? Hmm. And what he should have said, is how are you or can mm -hmm. I help you or is this hard mm -hmm. give me some bridge okay. and some entry yeah. instead of letting me flounder yeah. and think you know I was yeah. 19 and um, what I always want to say is if I had the looks of then with the confidence <laughs> of today but you know when I had the <laughs> looks Amazing. I didn't have the, that kind of thing <laughs> you know it's like you go in and you feel so insecure yeah yeah. And what I didn't want him to say mm -hmm. is to say nothing. Yes. What okay. I wanted him was to yes. speak with me, to join yes. me, to sit side by side mm -hmm. with me and to just say and look at life with me and say, this is really hard for you at this moment, isn't it? You know, oh, God, there's so much more I want to ask you, but I'm definitely going to come find you on the floor because there's things that I just want to kind of share with you. But I know you have to go. I know you have things to do. It was amazing speaking with you. Pleasure. I hope to see you on the floor here at the feast. Thank, Thank you, guys, you. and see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Awesome.